Okay. Uh, Kingwood United Methodist Church will meet there for uh, the introduction. There'll be music played. Let me ask you, uh, Pastor Welch, what time will your facility be open that day? Do you know? Whatever time we need it open. So we were asking if it could be open at 11? Sure. For, and people can come early to spend time in prayer and meditation. Would that be all right? Yes. Okay, good. So 11 o'clock, if you people want to go early, actually, if you want to find parking, it might be easier. But we'll all park there. We're going to have shuttles provided by Kingwood Baptist Church, right? First Baptist Church of Kingwood? Yes. No? Yes? I, I'm Rosalie, help me here. Uh, we're going to have... Somebody's committed. Who is it? I'm committed to find... As the pastors, you come in, I'm looking for buses that can help us ferry people from okay. the end of the march back to the beginning at the end. So okay, so it's not just the Baptist Church. Yeah. No. Sorry about that. That's all right. I've got a 20 something passenger and two. Okay, good. So if you have if you have passenger vans, large capacity vans that you can help provide to bring people back to uh, the the uh, the initial starting place after we leave St. Martha's, it would really be helpful because most people are going to park at the Methodist Church. Um, we'll start there. We'll have prayer. We'll have some songs. And then we'll start the journey. We'll have banners. We'll all walk down the sidewalk. There should be uh, law enforcement uh, present available for us. Uh, I think Carla is the one that's uh, coordinating the law enforcement and the permits with the city of Houston. So everything's going to be legal. We don't have to worry about them sending out dogs and beating us up on the sidewalk because we've illegally done something. Carla, do you have anything you want to say on that? I saw you stand up. No? No. Okay. Uh, so we will proceed down North Park towards St. Martha's. And when we pass each one of the successive congregations that are there, when we get in front of them, we're asking that the pastors there make sure that they have a couple of volunteers that are available, like with bottled water. Uh, they're also available to uh, have their congregations open for the restroom. So you go into, uh, we'll have the uh, 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 congregations open. You can do that. Then... At each one of the places is going to be sort of a prayer stop. And if you look, did we print? Did we put those in the bulletin as well? We didn't do that. Uh, we do it's have. On the table there for you. Can someone uh, give me? It's yes. Each one of the pastors and, and everybody that's that's in the neighborhood or any of the pastors here can have this. But for sure, this is for the uh, pastors on Woodland Hills. What will happen at each one? There'll be a verse read. And this is, for example, the Our Father. So Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Prayer point one will be a season of praise and, and, and meditation and worship. Then there'll be prayer point two at Holy Comforter Lutheran Church. That'll be the second verse of the Our Father. And we invite, uh, it's, it's about inviting the Spirit's presence in the walk and for the event. And so each place that we come, there's a little different part of the prayer that we pray in each as we get closer, uh, then we get into like point number three that says, give us the day our daily bread. Point four, forgive us our sins as our trespasses, uh, and as we forgive them that trespass against us. And in each one of those points of the verse, we'll be praying about asking God's forgiveness for the evil of the silence by those who did nothing uh, for, the, for, the pers uh, for the persecutors who did all that they did. And then we'll also point five, pray uh, for the Holocaust survivors and the descendants that they can be delivered through uh, this process of, of, of uh, trauma and also to be able to forgive. Next, to ask protection so that history will be uh, not repeated. And prayer point seven is to proclaim God's kingdom uh, in earth as it is in heaven. And then at St. Martha's, we're going to end that walk with <laughs> ask for a release of God's glory in our community and a blessing to our community. We'll go into the building and we're going to hold a, a memorial service, a very a well done, well orchestrated memorial service. It's going to be uh, uh, Rabbi uh, uh, Dan will be there, uh, Father Borsky will be there, all of you guys as pastors will be there with your congregation. We're going to, it's going to be a very respectable venue. Uh, there are going to be lighting of candles to remember each one of the camps. There is going to be a reciting, which the most beautiful thing that was listed, I think, that was mentioned, was while uh, music is being played, and I'm still waiting to hear back. How many know Dr. Serapides from here in Kingwood? It's a, he's a concert uh, a violinist. I don't know if you guys know him. He's a cardiologist in, in the community. 
I'm trying to see if he will commit to playing a particular song for this event. But when uh, the song is played, uh, the candles will be let, lit. Uh, each one of the, uh, these different people groups will be mentioned. And then everyone will pick up from their seat at eight and a half by 11 with a list of names and none of the paper pages are the same. So every individual will have a different list of people. And at one time with one voice, we'll all begin to read off that list. And so you'll hear a crescendo of names being risen up to the Shemaim, to the heavens, and where we will sort of bring out a re re repeating the names of these people. And it, it's, it's, it's going to, um, I'm telling you, just the thought of it is going to be an amazing thing to hear. A uh, very powerful moment. There will be different prayers. There will be a special guest that is going to be speaking. Our special, uh, the first one is a Holocaust survivor. And it slipped me, Ruth uh, Seinfeld. Ruth, Seinfeld. Uh, Ruth will be speaking. She is a survivor. And then we're going to have Dr. Hyde Penn, who is a, uh, ch a child of a survivor, who's going to speak. Uh, he has an incredible story that he tells about how he goes back uh, and finds the family that helped to rescue uh, his, his family and how he has sort of imparted into their life his own resources to help them survive. And these are very, I understand, poor individuals in this country. And so it's just an amazing story. And so what we want to do is bring to the surface a story that even though it's happened 60, year, 60 years ago, is a very real and living story. And that it continues to live on in the lives of survivors. It continues to live on in the memory of just descendants and both the, those who were the victims, those who were the survivors, but also the perpetrators. Because we have two or three individuals who were descendants of Nazi party members that are coming to say a special prayer of repentance. Uh, which is an amazing. I mean, I, to think that we're in our time and culture when hatred is so at such a pitched level uh, against different types of race groups. And we see all the nations sort of frothing at the mouth to uh, cause Israel to, to be booted out of their land. And here we have generations being restored in this age. An amazing story. And you're going to be a part of it. I really appreciate it. We're going to get moving right along with some of the introductions. And then I'm going to get right into this. First of all, thank you for making this, uh, this pre-event briefing um, a success. We cannot do something to make an impact if we don't get people's hearts involved in, in an endeavor. And the people's hearts usually follow the leaderships or the heart of the leadership. And so the reason why that I've asked you here today is for you to hear what we're planning, to look at the team, to realize that this is a, a momentous deal that's going to take place. And, Amen. and it's unique that is in our community in the sense that it's never been done. And we are going to set the watermark pretty high. And hopefully next year we'll do it in the woodlands and after that in Sugarland, and we'll continue to do it all around the city. And we want to encourage other communities to be involved. But we want to set the mark high. And I wanted this to be about uh, making a statement. Of course, we are going to remember the Holocaust victims. We're going to remember those who are the rescuers. But it's also a broader statement against hatred and bigotry and racism in our community. And it's important that we make a stand. It's important that we make the stand before we have to make a stand. It's easy to get a march when the, when the incident has already taken place. It's harder to do it before there's a problem. And in the world that we're living today, if you guys saw the news, last week there was a rabbi and uh, two of his children, and I think another one, killed in France on the street. Just shot in cold blood. Anti-Semitism has not gone away. It will not go away. And somebody has to make a stand. In this country, there is even a rise of anti-Semitic anti -Semitic views uh, in even some of the Christian religious institutions. And it's very disturbing. And I, for one, am not going to sit by and stand by and allow this to be spoken without a very loud no, but not only no, but H-U devil hockey sticks no. Over my dead body will we allow this to come up in this country. When in 1930s, in the late 30s and early 40s, 